Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we have a Viking longhouse build to explore. Now in the past, I've built two longhouses on the channel, so let me quickly tell you why I decided to make a third. The first one was unfortunately when I was still fairly new to the game, so it was kind of... And the second one was part of a large village where I unfortunately had to make the longhouse smaller because of the large size of the village in the area. So that leads us to today, where I've built a brand new longhouse. One that was not limited in size or scale, or even limited by the fact that I'm just trash at the game. So without further ado, let's get into the video so that I can show you the build. Alright, now we're entering the how-to section of the video where I'm going to take you a little bit through my process on how I built this longhouse. So first things first, I had to choose the land where I would build it. I knew I wanted a cool spot for a large longhouse. After a while of looking, I found this cliffside. After that, I had to choose the shape of the build. Now this is a longhouse. You don't really have a lot of shapes to choose from. So after choosing a long rectangle with one curved side, I started my construction. You can see that when I started going vertical, the first thing I did is I added a central hearth or a chimney to the very center of the build because I felt like that really fit the longhouse vibes. And then I also started with the walls. Here at the beginning with just the basic shape of the walls, I knew I wanted one side of the longhouse to be more stone and one side to be more wood. After getting on those basic walls, I went to a little bit more advanced. Here I started bringing in iron poles to support the walls and I started bringing in the real longhouse theme getting in those medieval vibes those Tudor style elements sticking out away from the build you know really trying to make it start to feel like a longhouse once I decided on a design I really liked on the walls I brought that all the way around and then I started on the roof frame for the build now the roof frame has two sides the front side was absolutely massive and needed horizontal iron supports brought over from inside of the chimney for support and then i did the back side of the roof which didn't need iron supports in the top of the roof but it did have its difficulties it was a roof curving around a stone wall so i had to make sure that i could get that looking right after that, I had to do the roof on the sideways bit of building that cuts right through the middle of the building. This roof I decided to match the same angles as the main roof so that it would fit the same type of theme. And then I needed to deal with the large flat stone platform I had at the top of the build. You can see I left two holes for a staircase to eventually come up to the top. And I also left a pretty nice amount of space for the house that would go at the top. You can see here I put a very rough design of the house at this point. Later we'll come through and add a lot of details, make it look good, just like the roof, just like the walls. Later we'll come back through and add more details to everything. After all this, I really just had the front entrance to do and the front roof which sticks out over the top. The front roof was a little bit difficult, but after a little bit of playing around, I came up with the design that I was happy with. And then after that, I needed to build the wall. The wall was a little bit tricky. I started with a symmetrical design and two iron poles. The symmetrical design turned out to be quite bulky and looked absolutely terrible from the side view. So I wiped that off the front face, started fresh with an asymmetrical design. The asymmetrical design I think came out much better. I did have to adjust the iron poles from two to one central iron pole, but I think in the end this was the right design. After this, I added the chimney to the build after that, I was really done with the exterior, and it was time to move to the interior, which brings us into the next section of the video, the tour. All right, let's get started with the tour. The first part of the tour, I think I need to explain kind of how this place actually works. So first things first, you might initially think that this place is supported by stone, when it is in fact supported by iron and the iron is here concealed by wooden poles this brings us to the first theme of the build which is combining stone and wood wherever i could and even up on the wood elements i've brought in some stone as well now onto the second theme we have of course a viking longhouse and i did that by choosing the shape of the build now 
Also, to add to that, I added in kind of a third theme, which was a medieval Tudor style architecture, where if you look up Tudor style architecture, you'll find a lot of buildings that have sections up top which stick out from the sections down below so that's kind of how everything came together on top of that you can see that we've got some roof elements which cut straight through the main roof to create some variation we've even got a ship tucked into the roof to add a mast here to just add more fun to the theme but that is that for the explanation of the outside, let's move inside. So first things first, here in the front of the building, you can see I brought around those nice Tudor style windows here. And I also even put in a balcony up top, which you can sit in and see who's entering your longhouse. We've got a nice stone staircase here up to the front door, even a little wood on the very top step just to add some details. Now, as we walk in, the first thing you're gonna see is on the left and right. You've got free drinks for anybody coming in. I thought this would be a really cool thing to add to a Viking longhouse, just free drinks on both sides of the door. And if we look up above the door, we've got some extra storage up there. And if we look around this way, more storage going all the way around. This is an idea I got from somebody in my Discord. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. This is a wonderful idea. Now the dining room is mainly themed for the longhouse, but don't you worry, every single thing that is in the crafting tab will be included in this build besides the obliterator and the stone cutter as we go. But yeah, that brings us into the dining room itself. Now the dining room has a lot of seating. We've got two long tables and three circular tables, all of them of course packed with food to hopefully make you feel like you might want to sit down here and grab a bite to eat. Over here on this side of the dining room, we have the first Tudor style element, which you guys get to see from the inside. A very cool little explanation of how this works. You can see if I highlight this little blue right here, here I'll zoom in. This little blue is the dark wood arch, which creates the Tudor style element sticking out from the build. They do stick through the floor, so you do have to create a false floor here above those to have a nice smooth floor and so that's what i did over here with this section this is kind of an extension of the dining room where you could sit and eat enjoy the views do a little bit of talking and maybe you know a little bit of room for storage on the sides now what else can we talk about the dining room we can also talk about the roof the roof is really cool i added a lot of extra supports in which you definitely don't need but they make it feel very realistic and very much like a longhouse we also have a chandelier which makes you feel like you're in a longhouse dining room with a lot of different extra details uh trophies and shields and banners to make it all pretty we've even got the ship up above which you can see very nicely nestled into the roof also we have a ball now the bar itself is supposed to feel like a tiki bar so you can see I did the thatch roofs up top we've got a little bit of seating mostly cargo boxes for seating which come from storage carts if you didn't know and yeah we've just got a little bar area here in the back fermenters some storage and you know some bread they could serve and just a few little things but as far as the rest of the dining room, we still have this corner over here to talk about. Now, first things first, we've got the staircase, which goes up to the top. Let's go ahead and take a trip up this staircase. You can see that I switched back and forth from ladders to stairs, flat, stairs, ladder, stairs. That was terrible the way I just said that. But the point is, is that I alternated stairs and ladders and it created a really funky looking staircase and it created a nice bit of access here to the balcony out front. You just want to be really careful when you're here not to bump this boat. I think it's cool, so I'm leaving it, but whatever. So as we come down the stairs, I'll go ahead and come to this side and show you how this kind of curvy staircase looks. I think it worked out really nicely, much better than I even thought it would. And yeah, this leads us over to this section over here. We've got a little bit of a wall divider here to kind of add a little bit of privacy to this section from the dining room. Now this is when we finally get into the things that are in the crafting tab or things that are actually useful in a Valheim world. This is actually your storage area. All I've done here is hidden it behind the theme of a shield making workshop. So you can see I've got storage tucked away under the stairs, under the different desks, but everywhere that you can see has tools, knives, axes, hammers, things that you might need to 
work on shields. You can see these shields have been painted. Maybe they're sitting here drying. These shields are waiting to be handed out to people. Shields on the walls. You know, just a cool little workshop. And I even managed to fit in the artisan table setup here on the side, which is really cool because I did need to find a place to put that anyway. So yeah, we've got a cool little shield area here, doubling as an inventory area. And that really finishes us up here in the dining room. You can see the final thing here is the stone wall with the five boss trophy heads we've got the stone hearth this is the chimney which comes all the way down from the ceiling and is pretty much in the center of the build you'll see that all the way around four sides we've got nice details on this stone hearth and this is where we enter the kitchen on this side we've got kitchen and on this side we've got kitchen these are under the sideways roof portion of the build so let me show you what we've got going on with the kitchen. On this side, we've got the stone ovens. If I turn around and face the central hearth, we've got some storage and we've got some different things on the walls. You can see some nice details up on the roof. This is a kitchen, so we've got different things which you can eat in Valheim up on the walls in the form of trophies. And yeah, we've just got a really fun little area over here places to set some food a butcher's knife more food a butcher's table buckets of berries in the back stone ovens we even have a spice rack for your spice racks which is pretty cool but also we've got some more double layered shelves here with some food double layered shelves with some storage and yeah just a really cool little area here as we go around we've got the drinking section of the kitchen i kid you not this is an entire section dedicated to drinking and well a little bit of honey but mainly to drinking which i think is really cool because we are in a viking longhouse but if i turn around you can see we've got the same ceiling up on the top we've got storage once again just no double layered shelf here and instead of food trophies we've got shields and on this side we've just got a really cool little area where you know lots of drinking would be done and you know pouring of drinks and talking about drinks and storing drinks and things like that but that pretty much leads us into the stone section of the build which is the workshop now the workshop is kind of crazy lots of different little things going on here but let's get started at the stone hearth we've got our full forge table set up with some nice details up above uh you know a little kind of wood mantelpiece up at the top with some tools we've got the full refinery blast furnace kiln set up the kiln itself is kind of uh, putting your coal into a nice little container for you which i think is a great detail some storage underneath the stairs storage cart full workbench set up this really is your workshop space in this build what's really cool about it though is that i wanted to get that theme of a workshop so i've got tools all over the walls you can see here i'm using the infinity hammer mod which just allows me to place these next to each other that also allows me to place the forge table setup next to each other but no worries that is the only place that i used a mod in this build now this is the end of the build the point of the building the curve of the building if you will and so that does lead us with the kind of wooden section that goes around at the end of the wooden section we've got a little storage area here a fun bit of storage different little things tucked away as we go around you'll see that we've got some seating we've got some drinks very limited space here to work with so this really became more of like a spot where you could sit and have a little secret talk away from people in the rest of the build or something you know and enjoy the views but as you come down to the end we do have a small library here and yeah just some extra little things to go with a small library but now we can head up the stairs which i forgot to mention a moment ago the stairs are pretty cool we've got even the lighting here in the room going upwards to match the vibe of the stairs and as we go up you can also see the cosmetic lighting we have here these are not ever intended to actually be lit they are just there for fun to look kind of cool along with the lines just there for fun on the ceiling um, and they are covering up some of the iron poles you can see we've got details along the walls as we go upwards and this is where we get to the place where you can actually sleep in the build here if we turn around at the stairs there wasn't room to actually access this so i just filled it with some storage 
We've got some nice stone thrones here to sit and enjoy the view. Another place to sit and do some eating. A very cozy little building here with a very nice roof peak. No front door since we're here at the top. I didn't really think it was necessary. As you head in, you can see that the ship is right here that is in the roof. I thought that was really cool to include that in the room. And yeah, just a basic small little house. A nice little desk here on the side details on the walls a bed to sleep in a little walled off area here for some wealth you know different shelving on the walls more details and yeah even a little mini closet here with some armor stands and an ekthir trophy and on this side we can come out onto a nice little deck which has your cartography table a nice little no place like home type of thing and a little sconce here and a place to sit all right, that is that for the video. <clears throat> All right, that is that for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like or maybe even subscribe. I also have a TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and a Reddit if you want to see more from me. Thank you very much for watching. More coming soon. And as always, have a good one.